Downward facing dog is an absolute staple posture in yoga, but it's one which is often performed incorrectly. But it's understandable because we're constantly told to keep the shoulders away from the ears, press into the mat, heels on the floor, and send the hips high. What does that even mean? Well, in this video, I'm gonna tell you the do's and don'ts of downward facing dog and how to perform this asana the correct way. Now, if you're not quite sure if you're performing your down dog incorrectly, Firstly, let's go over some of the common mistakes which people make in down dog. The first mistake, and one of the most common ones, is the rounded back. People will often keep their back rounded, and this is definitely not what we want in downward facing dog. The second one is the clenching of the shoulders. So keeping the shoulders lifted towards the ears, when in fact, we should be pushing the shoulders away but we'll get to that in a minute. The third one is often when people go from tabletop to downward facing dog, they tend to keep the tabletop position, but make it lifted a little bit higher off the mat. And the last one is overextending. People often push their chest towards their thighs, trying to get their heels onto the mat. And one of the biggest misconceptions about downward dog is that the heels need to touch the mat. The hamstring, which travels from our sit bones all the way down to the knee, is what determines whether you can actually reach your heels to the floor in downward facing dog. And if you're like me and can't quite get there yet, it's due to the flexibility of the hamstring. And in fact, I can tell you that the goal of downward facing dog is all to do with the spine. So we wanna keep the spine nice and straight, lengthened, sending our sit bones to the sky, and making sure there's a beautiful long line between the fingertips all the way to the sit bones. With all that being said, let's get into how to actually perform the downward facing dog correctly and what to do. So firstly, one of the main things people get really confused about is the distance between your hands and your feet in downward facing dog. So we're gonna start in child's pose. So bring in the arms as far forward as you can go, making sure the fingertips are spread nice and wide. We don't want to keep the fingers together. We're then going to take our hips up to tuck our toes, but we're going to take our hips back towards the heels. Then we're going to push up, sending the hips nice and high. Now, when you're here in down dog, if you roll forward to plank like this and notice that your shoulders are over your wrists and you're comfortable here in the plank position, then you know that the distance between your feet and hands are perfect in downward facing dog. Let's talk about the elbows here. So often people tend to lock their elbows in downward facing dog. So if you are prone to hyperextension, like me, you can create a little micro bend at the elbows here. Let's move on to the shoulders. What we often find with our shoulders in downward facing dog is people tend to lift, scrunch and hunch, bringing the shoulder blades all the way up to the ears. So we wanna relax, let them drop a little bit, so that there's no tension in the neck. The neck wants to stay nice and straight with the spine. And so the shoulder blades still wanna be lifted, not lowered, but they don't wanna be pushed together. Instead, they wanna be rounded, broadened, pulled in slightly. Moving along to the spine and the main goal of the downward facing dog, the spine should be nice and straight. There should be a nice line between the fingertips all the way to the sit bones. But if you find that your pelvis is tilted slightly in a posterior position, you wanna make sure it's anterior. But if you are struggling to do this, you can bend the knees to ensure that the spine is nice and lengthened. And then finally, the position of the feet. So the feet should be spread hip width distance, but if you do find that you have tight hamstrings or any tension here, you can step the feet out to the sides of the mat slightly wider, and this will make the hamstrings feel a lot better in downward facing dog. So there we have it, the do's and don'ts of downward facing dog and how to perform it correctly. Now, if you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy this one next. If you wanna see more videos like this, or you wanna come and flow with me, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.